I am pleased that we get to hear today from Dave Stanton, who's a longtime friend of mine because he's been running Celebrate Recovery here, leading Celebrate Recovery. You don't really run Celebrate, nobody, you can't run Celebrate Recovery, God does. And we go by the spirit. Dave, I got the mic on for you. Please come and talk to us about Celebrate Recovery, which has been meeting at Christ Church Sunday evenings and sometimes other days of the week when there's a step study uh, for quite a number of years now. Dave. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. Good to see you. What a privilege. What a privilege to be able to be here this morning and to share with y'all. That's almost Southern, isn't it, y'all? I am truly excited about being able to share with you a little bit about Celebrate Recovery. Celebrate Recovery is not any different than the missionary outreaches that you already serve and are participating in. You see, we're an extended arm of this church. And the good news is that this church has embraced Celebrate Recovery since 2008. September, we're coming up on our 15th anniversary of being in this church. Praise God. Let's give him a hand, right? Amen. Thank you for that. What is really exciting is that we have seen hundreds, literally hundreds of people come through those doors that have been searching for hope. Everybody struggles. I don't care who you are, including Pastor and Karen, we all struggle. We have different things that go on in our lives because the enemy is there to attack us. Do you know that? He is. Well, I was blessed to participate in Celebrate Recovery 12 years ago. And as I was going through the step study, I found that the gentleman that was leading that ministry said, David, you need to be the ministry leader of this program. I said, forget it. Well, God has his ways, don't you know? 11 years ago, this church embraced me to be able to be the pastor, ministry leader of Celebrate Recovery. And I have been so blessed and so honored to be able to serve and see people's lives changed. What I'd like to share with you this morning is a short video that will give you a little indication of the kinds of things that we do. So, could we see the video? It was about eight years ago that a man named Dan came through those doors. And he was coming through the doors looking like this, slumped over, hurting. I went over and I shook his hands, and he was almost in tears. And he said, I need help. And I said, okay, I want you to know one thing. I can't fix you, but I know the one who can. Dan shared with me that his son had committed suicide, 28 years old. He and his wife blamed him for that suicide. Can you imagine the guilt and shame that was going on in his life? Again, I couldn't fix him. 
But over a two-year period, I saw this man be touched by the Holy Spirit. This man gave up that guilt feeling and realized it wasn't his fault. Today, he and his wife rejoice in the Lord more deeply than ever before. They don't feel guilty anymore. There's freedom that came to this man. Not because I could fix him, but our God fixed him. I had the privilege of watching God work through this man's life over a two-year period of time. It was almost like I had God's eyes seeing exactly what he was doing. That was just one of them. Then we had a lady. Her name was Linda. Linda came in. Linda was one of those that struggled with issues at home. Some abuse, financial distress, a lot of pain, loss of a child. We experience it all. But Linda decided to take care of her problems by cutting herself and bleeding. Yeah, it took two years, but she kept coming back every week. Today, She's free, free from all of that anxiety. Today, she is working in a church locally on the staff of that church. God can do anything with anyone who is broken, who wants to have help. Can you imagine how the Holy Spirit can minister to you? He can. One of the things that we've learned in Celebrate Recovery is that everything of your past becomes a benefit for God's glory. Can you imagine that? All of the junk of your past, God can use that because there's other people out there who experience the same kind of thing. And he wants to have your experience be able to share with somebody else. And you all can do that right now just by telling others your story about Jesus Christ. We're all walking testimonies of Jesus Christ. And as we share God's love with other people, they're going to say, there's something different about you. I like you. I want to use you. I want to be part of your life. One of the guys that came through that door was a guy named Dave. Not this Dave, but I can identify with him. Dave came through the doors, and Dave had an anger issue. On a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being minimal, 10 being high, Dave was a 12. Serious rage anger. He was the kind of person that when you're going down the highway, if he didn't like what you were doing, he'd cut you off. Know those kind of people, yeah? I do. Dave brought three of his friends with him that night, first time through those doors. He'd not, he had not been to church in his whole life, didn't even know what it was all about. But I shared with Dave a simple little story. There's two kinds of anger. There's righteous anger, and there's evil anger. God proved himself, and you all know the story, Matthew, where Jesus went into the temple and he cleaned the cleaned house, right? He got angry. He flipped over the tables, the money lenders, and he made a whip and sent all the animals out of the temple. Righteous anger. That was the first time David heard about that. We had a beautiful session that night. Dave and his three friends accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Nothing that I did, but it was what God could do through our ministry. I want to also tell you about a scripture that we use pretty frequent. It's Proverbs 28, 13, and it says, anyone who conceals their sin does not prosper, 
No, you might get financially rich, but you're not prospering spiritually. But whoever confesses their sins and renounces them finds mercy. One of the things that we learn is that pastors and their family work very hard. I don't know if you've often thought about it, but Pastor Mark and Karen truly work 24 hours a day, seven days a week. They're always on call to assist. They love every one of you people. And I assure you, they pray for every one of you people. You're all family to them. They're here to serve. I'm proud of the work that they do here. I'm proud of every one of you for being here and supporting them. And there's one thing I do ask. When you pray on your private time, pray for them because they work really hard for you. Oh, he sits in his office and you think, well, that's all he does five days a week. No, not true. He's there working for you every day. So give him credit, work with him, pray for him. What I want you to know is that we do meet twice a week. We meet on Sunday nights at 5.30. Every one of you are all invited to come and fellowship with us on Sunday night. We have a simple little message. We'll give you a scripture. We'll give you a challenge. And then we divide women go with women and men go with the men. And we do that purposely because, as you know, we all think different. Women do it one way, men do it another. And we want to make sure that the women are with the women and that they can take and solve their issues together and men can solve their issues together. And then, on Monday night, we have our, what's called our step study. The step study is where we get a little bit more intimate. Everything is totally confidential. We do not share anything outside of these doors. What we do is we minister to one another and we share one another's burdens, and that's fulfilling scripture. Did you know that? Galatians chapter 6, verse 2. You can look it up. We're called to minister to one another and to share one another's burdens. That's what we do at Celebrate Recovery. Celebrate Recovery has been going since 1991. And I am so pleased to let you know that over 7 million people have gone through the step studies. And over 27,000 churches around the world embrace this ministry. It's a ministry that is going to go on for at least the next 100, maybe even 200 years. Why? Because it gets close to people who want to know Jesus Christ more intimately. Now, you can also come on Monday night and hear Flash Allen doing his practicing. But I can promise you, you're going to get more than the music that you hear on Sunday morning. He is one blessing. Can you hear that downstairs? Oh, we love it. <laughs> We're ministered to. And what a blessing it is to have him here on Monday night. So, All I can say is whatever hurt, habit, or hang up anyone has, God has a solution but he needs connection of people. You can't do it alone. And our mission is to help you help others come to know Jesus Christ. Romans 12 tells us that we are to have a change of mind. And in doing so, we're going to glorify our Lord. Thank you, Pastor Mark, for the opportunity to share. We'll pray for just a moment. Okay. Lord Jesus Christ, thank you for your good work in Dave and in so many others around the world who really are taking seriously your call to make disciples and yes. teaching people to uh, understand and feel and experience your love and to obey everything you've commanded. That leads to our health, that leads to our wholeness, even our holiness. Mm -hmm. Thank you for these men and women on the front lines who are reaching out to those who have just the barest idea of 
who you are, but have a real strong idea of what their needs are. Thank you that you are piercing the darkness with Celebrate yes. Recovery. Thank you that you are healing hurts and changing habits and bringing hearts uh, home to you. Our world needs goodness. Mm -hmm. Thank you for Celebrate Recovery. Thank you for Dave. Bless their ministry. I pray in Christ's name. Mm -hmm. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah.